From coast to coast, over America's three major networks combined, the Red Cross Roll Call. The history of the American Red Cross chronicles a vision to relieve human suffering on a global scale. We're here to cheer for the Red Cross, for the wonderful work they do. A vision made real by people reaching out to help others spontaneously and impartially. Their individual acts of compassion and courage have kept the Red Cross on the frontiers of humanitarian work century after century. It is, in fact, astonishing how many programs and initiatives pioneered so very long ago still exist to this day. The International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement was founded in 19th century war-torn Europe by Swiss businessman Henri Dunant after witnessing the death and suffering of 40,000 soldiers at the Battle of Solferino in northern Italy. I was so overcome with compassion, horror and pity that I became the Samaritan of Solferino because I tried to be useful. For work of this kind, paid help is not what is wanted. Its immediate action is essential. For help which will save a wounded man today will not save him tomorrow. There is need for voluntary odolites and nurses, zealous, trained and experienced, whose mission will be recognized and supported by the commanders in the field. Henri Dunant. Dunant's book, Memory of Solferino, and his relief efforts led to the creation in 1863 of the International Committee of the Red Cross. Twelve countries also adopted the first Geneva Convention declaring that wounded and sick combatants were to be cared for by either side in a conflict. From that time onward, the International Red Cross Movement, headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, have worked together to alleviate human suffering caused by war and disaster around the world. As Dunant established the International Committee of Red Cross, Clara Barton was demonstrating her determination and skills for organization on the battle frontiers of the Civil War. I shall remain here while anyone remains and do whatever comes to my hand. I may be compelled to face danger, but never fear it. And while our soldiers stand and fight, I stand and feed and nurse them. Clara Barton. While traveling in Europe, this angel of the battlefields learned of Henri Dunant and the International Red Cross Movement. When Clara returned home, she organized the American Red Cross in 1881 at age 60. Within months, the organization was providing its first disaster relief in the aftermath of a devastating forest fire in Michigan. The skies grew murky and dark and our atmosphere bitter with drifting smoke. Our relief rooms were instantly secured, and our white banner, with its bright scarlet cross, was thrown to the breeze, telling every onlooker what we were there to do. Clara Barton. The next year, Clara convinced the American government to ratify the Geneva Convention bringing the United States into compliance with the principles of the International Red Cross Movement. In her 23 years as president, Clara led relief efforts after disasters such as the Johnstown Flood and the Galveston, Texas tidal wave of 1900 that caused over 6,000 deaths. By the close of the 19th century, the Red Cross had also provided service to victims of social unrest in other parts of the world, and recruited 700 nurses who delivered medical assistance to the military during the 1898 Spanish-American War. Finally, in 1900, the American Red Cross received a congressional charter that assigned it relief responsibilities on behalf of both civilians and the military. Although then as now, the Red Cross is not a government agency. It relies on the generosity of people to do its work. Services expanded under the new leadership of Mabel Boardman. 
Red Cross workers traveled around the country by rail, teaching first aid and injury prevention. Mabel Boardman chose Jane Delano, head of the Army Nurse Corps, to become director of the Red Cross Nursing Service. These committees, with nearly 1,300 enrolled nurses, are a guarantee to the nation that neither the stress of calamity nor the turmoil of war will ever again find us wholly unprepared. Jane Delano. By creating a rural nursing service for medically underserved populations in remote areas, Jane Delano established the presence of the Red Cross at another frontier, our nation's public health care system. At the same time, the Red Cross was pioneering humanitarian work in Cherry, Illinois. A mine collapse had killed 260 people. Led by National Director Ernest Bicknell, the Red Cross established a pension fund for hundreds of widows and orphans. Any great disaster instantly arouses the generosity of the American people. When the magnitude of the Cherry Mine accident became known, relief activities sprang into life in every corner of Illinois. The United Mine Workers of the state and nation set into motion the machinery for collecting a relief fund among their membership. Ernest Bicknell. This response laid the groundwork for Congress to later establish workers' compensation policy as we know it today. The Red Cross continued to break new ground in water safety when it introduced a water safety program, the Life Saving Corps, headed by Commodore Wilbur E. Longfellow, known as the Amiable Whale, for his enthusiasm and dramatic training techniques. With the onset of World War I, the American Red Cross mobilized millions of volunteers to meet the needs of the American and Allied forces. Within weeks of the war's outbreak, the Red Cross sent the Mercy Ship, the SS Red Cross, to Europe, carrying 170 surgeons and nurses. When the U.S. entered the war, the American Red Cross entered as well, with supplies, recreational activities, and other aid, such as canteen service for troops in transit and the production corps to make garments, surgical dressings, and comfort kits. I used to get awful worried about all the troubles, but my mommy told me about some people who helped the American Red Cross. Acts of courage and compassion continued throughout the Depression as Americans donated their time, talents, and money to the Red Cross. In 1939, the Red Cross became involved in World War II when it became the chief supplier of civilian relief supplies, eventually aiding 75 million victims overseas. In 1941, the Red Cross began a blood donor service for the U.S. military. The first request was for 20,000 units of plasma. Instead of producing only liquid plasma from donated blood, Dr. Charles Drew, a brilliant and renowned African-American scientist and teacher, discovered how to make dried plasma, which lasted longer. I was teaching surgery at Howard University when I received the telegram, the Board of Medical Control of the Blood Transfusion Betterment Association is creating a position of medical supervisor to act as liaison officer between the board and the hospital engaged in procuring plasma for shipment to the British Red Cross. I am requested to offer this position to you as being the best qualified of anyone we know. Of course, I accept it immediately. Charles Drew. The Red Cross recruited over 70,000 nurses, provided 42 million emergency communications, and sent more than 27 million parcels of food and medicine to the nearly 1.4 million U.S. and Allied prisoners of war in Germany and elsewhere. It wasn't long before the American Red Cross was supporting U.S. troops again in Korea and later in Vietnam, supporting not only the troops but also 130,000 refugees. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have a dream. The fundamental principles of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, values that both John F. Kennedy and Reverend Martin Luther King also shared, were defined at the 20th International Conference of the Red Cross in 1965. 
the confrontation was not created by the police. The confrontation was pre During the turbulent 60s and 70s, youth and world events took center stage for the nation and the Red Cross. The Red Cross increased its focus on young people by creating innovative youth volunteer programs. In 1967, Nick Lamesh was still in college when he started volunteering for Friendship Latin America, an international work-study program sponsored by the National Youth Office. It wasn't always smooth sailing. The danger of running down the street as bombs fell all around me didn't stop me from trying to find my partner, Tomasina. She was in the building where we taught our Red Cross courses to the Hondurans. It was now a makeshift hospital for the wounded victims of the bombing attack on the village. Very quickly, we found ourselves practicing first aid instead of teaching it. Nick Lamesh. Nick's involvement with the Red Cross youth earned him the honor in 1970 of being the youngest person ever appointed to the American Red Cross Board of Governors. He was 24. Later, the Red Cross helped pioneer yet another health and safety program for Americans. Nationwide training in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, the most effective way to revive persons suffering cardiac arrest. It was in the next decade that the American Red Cross made great contributions through blood services and health and safety. Please give blood. There's a life to be saved right now. During the early 80s, Dr. Jerome H. Holland served as the first African-American chairman of the Red Cross. There may be a tendency to sit back and sit on the laurels of our past, but the only way we can be successful in the future is to build on our firm foundation of the past. Each of us, from personal experience and by individual voice, must communicate the values and satisfaction of participating in community service under the Red Cross banner. We must look to all segments of the community. Jerome Holland. Jerome Holland made his mark as a diplomat, educator, and humanitarian. Disaster relief remained, as always, a major concern during the 1990s. When Hurricane Andrew struck Florida and Louisiana, devastating property and leaving thousands homeless, Red Cross workers served 5.6 million meals, housed 139,000 people in 488 shelters, and established 29 service centers. Natural disasters were the most common, but not the only response made by Red Cross disaster relief. In 1995, the Oklahoma City bombing demonstrated that disasters could also be caused by terrorism. Soon after, the Aviation Disaster Family Assistance Act of 1996 designated the Red Cross as the agency for helping families of victims of air disasters. When the events of September 11, 2001 occurred, the Red Cross responded on a scale never before experienced by either the organization's workers or those they serve. In December 2004, the American Red Cross joined with the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies to provide relief for survivors of the terrifying tsunami disaster. The American Red Cross in the 21st century continues to respond to the emerging needs of those it serves. It has become a leader in partnering with and mobilizing communities to help people prepare for and respond to life-threatening emergencies. It has mandated a goal of total diversity throughout the entire organization, fulfilling its commitment to reflect the nation as a whole. And it continues to initiate new and innovative programs and services. I want to tell you a little story. The story of the American Red Cross continues to unfold. It includes some of life's most intimate moments, as well as historic events played out on a world stage. It is about partnerships, generosity, 
endurance, courage, compassion, and caring. Essentially, a story of the human heart. The story is told by those who have served and continue to serve decade after decade, preventing and alleviating human suffering wherever it occurs. And now, the story will also be told by you.